Ezra chapter 8. These are now the chief of the fathers, and this is the gene genealogy of them that went up with me, Ezra, from Babylon in the reign of Artaxerxes the king. Now remember, half the book through Ezra, when they go back to Jerusalem to build, Ezra's not there. He comes afterwards. And we got another genealogy list. Of the sons of Phinehas, Gershom, the sons of Ithamar, Daniel, the sons of, that's not the Daniel, book of Daniel, the sons of David, Hathor, the sons of she Shekiniah, of the sons of Parash, Zechariah, and with him were reckoned by genealogy of the males, 130, 50. The sons of Path of Moab, Ethani, the son of Zariah, and with him 200 males. No female, male. They didn't say females didn't go, but the number was of the male. Like the gospel. Jesus fed 5,000 men besides the women. Of the sons of Shechani, the sons of Jacksonville, with him 300 male. The sons of Adin, Abed, the son of Jonathan, with him 50 male. The sons of Elam, Jethaniah, the son of Athaliah, and with him 70 male. Of the sons of Shephatiah, Zebiah, Zebiah, the son of Michael, and with him four score males. 20 times 4 would be 80. A score is a 20 times the number before it. Of the sons of Joab, Obadiah, the son of Jehiel, with him 218 male. The sons of Shemlanith, the sons of Jephatiah, and with him 103 score male be 60. And the sons of Bebiah, Zechariah the son of Bebiah, and with him 20 and 8 male. And the sons of Asgad, Jonathan the son of Hecaton, and with him 110 male. Of the last sons of Adonachim, last sons, whose names are Elphat, Jael, and Shemaliah, and with him were three score male. And the sons of Big Veil, Utai, Zibdod, and with them 70 male. So there's 15,000 males. And you just want to give a rough count, take half of those males married, and you got the wives. And don't forget, sometimes they had double wives, more than one wife. And then you want to take, you know, a rough count of that. Every family had one child, which you know the Jews had more. So you're you're looking at about over much people. A number I can't figure out. And I gathered them together to the river that runneth to Ahava. So they left Babylon, they come to Ahava. We're gonna get a time in a moment. And there abode me in tents three days. They stopped. And I viewed the people and the priests and found there none of the sons of Levi. He's going off. He takes a look at the people. And he says, well, wait a minute. Where are the children of Levi? Now there's priests. Now remember, all priests are Levites, but Levites, not all Levites are priests. One tribe of the children of Israel is missing from Ezra, the Lev Levites. Then sent I for Eliezer, for Aria. That's the first time that word shows up, Aria, in the Bible. For Shemaniah, and for Elathan, and for Jareb, and for El Nathan, and Nathan. You got El Nathan and Nathan. El, E L, that's, that's Jehovah. And for Zechariah, for Mishulam, chief men, and Jariah. And for El Nathan, men of understanding. So they know. They have understanding of God. And I sent them with, with commandment unto Ido, the chief at the place Casvia. And I told them what they should say unto Ido and to his brethren, the Nephilim, at the place Casvia that they should bring unto us ministers 
of the house of our God. Now the Levites are the ministers. They're not the priests. But they do the service of the tabernacle temple. The priests do the sacrificing. The Levites make sure everything's there. And make sure it's all clean. Make sure there's wood by the altar. Make sure there's enough oil for the lamp. So only the priest can go in and fill. And by good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding. Of the sons of Meliah, or Meli, the sons of, Z of Levi, the son of Israel. That's who Levi is, the son of Jacob. And Shabiah with his sons and his brethren, 18. And Hashabiah and with him, Jeshuiah, of the sons of Merari, his brethren, and his sons, 20. Now here comes the Levites. And also the Nephilim, who David and the princes had appointed for the service of the Levites, 220 Nephilims, all of them, were expressed by name. So the Levites were the ministers, and Nephilims were the servants under, under the Levites. Those were the men that came to Joshua. And Joshua made a pact with them, we won't kill you. And when they found out that they lied to deceive Israel, we're going to make you burners of wood and water for our altar. That's where they are now. And look how they're still there. They're still mentioned even as going back to the temple. Then I proclaimed the fast, Ezra, there at the river Ahab, that we might afflict ourselves before our God, the fast. We're not going to eat. We're not going to drink. We're going to be very sore. And seek of him a right way for us and our little ones. So children are there. They just weren't counted. And for all our substance, whatever they had. Some had more and some had less. I can't imagine. For I was ashamed to acquire of the king a hand of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way. Now, they're traveling to Babylon. Probably taking a, a, a trade route. And along these trade routes, there were robbers and thieves. The Good Samaritan came upon a man that, that met a robber or a thief and half killed him for dead and left him side of the road. Paul says he met amongst these thieves and robbers. And they will do what it took to take from you. If you gave it up, probably most likely spared your life. If you gave a fight, you ended up injured. If you really gave a fight, you end up dead. And watch what God does here. And what, what, what Ezra is saying right now is the king could send an army with Ezra. Ezra's like, you know what? We believe God. We believe God's going to help us. So you don't need your guns, you don't need your swords, you don't need your armament. We're going to trust in God and not armor and not in weapons. And if we're not going to trust in arms and weapons, we're sure not going to trust the government with their army. Our God is powerful and able to protect us. As you know, the Christian church today goes turning from God to weapons. It will happen, it will happen. But God's able to protect us. Imagine how many Christians in the early church and throughout the book of Acts were killed by the world without protection. And there's many stories of throughout the church, in church history, I'm trying to remember, uh, name is the tip of my head, but uh, Walt Disney. You haven't read about the world. Yeah, some of them fought and some of them didn't. And God still protected both. So we're not going to ask for help. Because we had spoken unto the king. Saying the hand of our God is upon all them for good. That seek him. King, our God is a great God. He's a good God. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. They preach to the king. Our God is able. King, 
Can you give us an army? Can we have people in church get their gun registration so we can have them carry a gun? I thought your God's able. He is able to deliver, you know, to him. He is able. But then you got, you know, security armed force. God's able. We had a couple months ago, time goes by quickly. We had somebody break in our house, sat in my chair here, and God protected us while they walked in our bedrooms. Now, there was not a time for them to kill us or tie us up or do anything that could have been done. God said, just sit at that computer and wait for her to wake up. And when you take that car, just drive it, you know, one big U-turn and park in the neighbor's driveway, please. All the things that can be and all the things that we praise God that didn't happen. And then we sought the, 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 the pray and we sought the help of the person that did do it. Now, what if I came out here with my gun? Bang, bang, bang. I was sent to send her off to hell. You can't preach that today because preachers to get upset. Our, I mean, the hand of God is upon all them for good that seek him. I know that personally. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. That would be at the great white throne judgment today. God's not always going to strike your enemies down dead. In the Old Testament he would, but not the church age. So we fasted and besought our God for this. And he was entreated of us. They fasted and they prayed to God for protection. Prayer and fasting is out of the modern church today. I've been in church. Oh, we're going to pray tonight. And then a couple weeks go, a couple, three weeks go, and then there's no more prayer. And then they come back. Oh, can we pray for this list? And then, then it stops. And then, you know, I've been in men's prayer meeting. We sat there and, and shut the bull for 20 minutes. Oh, oh, we forgot to pray. Let's get going. Hurry up. I've been in church, there were no prayer meetings at all. Then I separate 12 of the chief of the priests, high priest, and then the priest, 12 of them, Sherebiah, Heshbaiah, and 10 of their brethren with him. I'm glad he didn't need to name them all. You know, I'm not pronouncing these names right, but before my family, my wife, and my daughter, I sit here and say, you know what, I gave it a shot. We've gone through the Bible complete from Genesis to Revelation. We start in Genesis. We're in Ezra. I can say before my family, you know what? I read every word of the, of the word. Of that. I read every word of the Lord. Some words I didn't do too well. There's some English words I can't say with my tongue. There are some of these names. You know, when you're reading to yourself, you don't have to get it right. And it's probably wrong in the English anyway. But at least put your eyes over it when you're reading. Look at how many words there are. Give it a shot. And weighed unto them, now this is the 12 men, the silver and the gold and the vessels, even the offering the house of our God, which the king and his counselors and his lords and all Israel had present, had offered. Now look at that. The Gentile king, the Gentile leadership counselors that's who the king comes up and said man we gotta get around i got a decision to make here's the thing here's what i think anybody got else what they think what can we do okay counselors and his lords that's the cabinet what we call it in the government of america today with the president he's got a cabinet of all secretaries of everything this gentile government said you're going to go build the temple of the Lord. We want you to pray for us. And here we give an offering to that God. Of the government. And then Israel was given. The people of God. I even wait. Notice Ezra does it. Ezra weighed unto the hand 650 talents of silver. And silver vessels 100 talents. And of gold 100 talents. Also 20 basins of gold of a thousand drams and two vessels of fine copper. That's the only time that word shows up in the Bible, copper. Now they will believe they didn't know what copper was. Here it is. They knew exactly what copper was. 
I've seen copper. I don't know what it is, but there it is. Precious as gold. You get that? You know, you can go down and copper at, at, at the home stores. You'll be able to get copper at the big name stores. You can go down to the junkyard, get copper, and it says here, it is as precious as gold. So, yeah, copper was an extreme rare metal ore back then, but they knew what it was. And I said unto him, ye are holy unto the Lord, the priest. I know plenty of Christians that think they're holy unto the Lord. They're full of baloney. So what he's doing, he's called 12 priests, correct? Not Levites, priests. He's given them the holy things to take care of the holy things. He says, you're holy people. I'm in charge of you with the holy thing. No one else could touch those things. You realize if Ezra gave it to a Levite, to a Levite God may call fire down? Ask uh, your, was it Uriah? No, not your dad. Uzzah. All he did was touch the ark. <clears throat> He's gone. That ark is as holy as the vessels are holy. This would hold the bread. This will hold the incense. This would hold the holy blood that was the ark. This would do something in the service of tabernacle. No order, orderly person could handle this. He says, you are holy unto the Lord. The vessels are holy. Also, the silver and the gold are a free will offering unto the Lord God of your fathers. No one demanded no one made a pledge they gave it of themselves watch ye <laughs> watch ye said a what and keep them until ye weigh them before the chief of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers of Israel at Jerusalem in the chambers of the house of the Lord you keep that stuff now he knows the temples are rebuilt you keep that stuff. You are obligated for that stuff. It is your stuff until we get to the chambers and we weigh it out and it better be all exact. Better not be one. I don't know what small Jewish measurement is, but there better be not lacking. So the priest, so, so took the priests and the Levites, the weight of the silver and the gold and the vessels to bring them to Jerusalem unto the house of our God. Then we departed from the river Ahiva on the twelfth day of the first month to go to Jerusalem, and the hand of our God was upon us. He delivered us from the hand of the enemy and of such as lay in wait by the way, the thief and robbers. Now, when we come back over here, let's see if I can find a little thing. All right, turn back to chapter 7, verse 9. 7 9 for upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon and on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem so it took him four months now come over here where he's at the river Hava verse 31 again on the twelfth day of the first month so it took 11 days to get from Babylon to this river Ahava. Just a little interesting side note there and we came to Jerusalem and abode there three days. So as soon as they, as soon as they arrived, a three-day journey. Three days, okay, we're here. Now on the fourth day, was the silver and gold and the vessels weighed in the house of our God by the hand of Merimoth, the son of Uriah, the priest. All right, guys, come on, bring it, put it on the scale. Okay, it's that. Thank you. You ever wonder if they, ever, if they found maybe a little more that maybe the priest gave? I mean, they were so giving. No one ever, I mean, I, wow, that's a little bit more than what I gave you. I came from me and my family. Well, amen, glory to God. You know, I don't know, I'm adding. And with, and with him was Eliezer, the son of Phinehas. And with him was Jehoshaphat, the son of Jeshua. That's the high priest. And Noah died, the son of Bimei, Levites. Now notice how more than one handles the money and the treasure. When you go to church, not one person is to take care of the offering. When you have someone dealing with the money and the treasury and the accounts of the church, you should have at least a minimum of two, if not three people. And when one man counts it, 
The second man counts it and makes sure the first man is right. And the third man counts it, makes sure the first and the second man is correct. And either one does not agree with it, you do a full count again. And you take the, the three men, you take that offering, whatever you put it in, and you handle it to the bank or whatever, however you handle it, together. Never leave that money unguarded. Because there are people out there who say, well, I gave a 20 and they didn't. I was shocked to find out that people put an offering envelope in the offering and there's nothing in it at all. It just, you know, look, look at me. I put something in there. No, you didn't. You just put some paper. The wrong paper. But that's another note. By number and by weight of everyone. And all the weight was written at that time. So they recorded. They put down the books. Also the children of those that have been carried away. The Jews. Which were come out of the captivity offered burnt offerings unto God of Israel 12 bullocks for all Israel 90 and 6 rams 70 and 7 lambs 12 he goats for a sin offering look at that the nation of Israel is offering a sin offering to God all this was a burnt offering unto the Lord the burnt offering was not eaten be fully burnt and they delivered the king's commissions. That's the only time that word shows up. Unto the king, lieutenants. That's the first time that word shows up. And to the governors on this side of the river. That would be the Euphrates River. And further. That's the only time that word shows up further. That means to promote or advance. We furthered his position up to a higher office. We furnished him to another position. What does it mean? He furthered the people in the house of God. Glory to God. 